Hello, yes, uh, welcome. And I'm going to present about the physical environmental impacts on a hydropower reservoir under different operational modes. So we have already seen from yesterday uh, how important is this to decarbonize uh, EU. And we are working in a project called HydroConnect, which uh, the main objective is to look at the impacts of connecting the Norwegian hydropower to continental Europe and the UK. There are several, uh, as you see here, points that we are looking at. And also it is uh, several partners involved in this project and it was funded by the Research Council and the industry. So what I'm going to present in detail is this last uh, point about what are the environmental impacts in these uh, reservoirs. Why it is important to study this? Well, it is important because there is a variation on uh, that can be altered on the physical chemical processes and also it can alter the biological activity. And also it is important to have a stable ice cover to ensure the lake crossing of animals and also humans. So we are looking at specifically at two reservoirs in uh, Siraquina system in the south of Norway. And there are these two reservoirs uh, marked on red, is uh, Roskrept and Oyarvan. Um, today they are running with a, a traditional hydropower plant uh, system operation, but we are simulating how it will be when you have a pumping system and therefore uh, what is the impact of having this flexibility also from a pumping operation. So the focus of the presentation is uh, mainly two. We are going to look at the impacts on the hydromorphology uh, based on water level fluctuations and the watering indices, and also the impacts on the uh, effects on temperature, water temperature, stratification and ice cover. So for the water level variations, the first part, the hydromorphological impacts, uh, we have run a medium term optimization model to simulate traditional versus pumping. And we see in the upper graph, it is the water levels in Roskrep, the upper reservoir, while the lower uh, graph shows the water levels in Oyarvand, the lower reservoir, and also smaller in size and volume. So what we can appreciate is that there are not uh, that much differences in the water levels in the Roskrep uh, reservoir, but there are in Oyarvand. And what we see, the green line is the pumping, so it's uh, more frequent fluctuations, but with lower amplitude. Um, we also wanted to check uh, what are the uh, hydromorphological classification based on the HIMO report. It is uh, composed by 17 hydromorphological indices, and the aim is to have an easy uh, way to classify the impacts in uh, lakes and reservoirs, and also the daily resolution is time, time resolution. So we look more in detail into some of these parameters, and just as an example, I will show you the, the water of the littoral zone. Um, we consider the, the water of the littoral zone as the regulation zone. And in this case, we see Oyarbaden, so the lower reservoir. How does it fall when you have the traditional, which you see that the percentage of the water is falling into the categories of um, uh, it is extremely modified and severely modified. While when we have the pumping, these uh, categories are reduced. When we look at the dewatering indices, this is a new index we added to the 17th of the hydromorphological just to look at an index that can also give an idea on the spatial resolution, so where in the lake it is the higher impacts. And what we see in the upper one, this the water index mean the red dots and the color, it's the occurrence, so how many times there is a pixel or an area that is covered by water during five continuous days, and then is the water in the next 30 days. So in Oyarbaten, again, we see that this is uh, much more uh, visual and also is impacted uh, more frequent than with the traditional and also than in Oyarbaten, uh, in Roskrep, sorry. So this, for example, can give you an idea of areas that you want to have a restoration measure and that, that will be impacted uh, more frequent. We also look at the changes or the occurrence numbers of uh, variations when the water level goes below 
uh, the previous October, so during winter, that means that in October, if there has been a spawning in your reservoir, then the water level should not go below that because the eggs might freeze. And therefore, we check what is the occurrence of this to happen. And we also see that with the pumping, because as we saw before, the amplitude of the regulation is reduced, there is also less number of occurrence of this type of events. The way forward on this is actually we are looking also to implement ramping constraints in the hydropower uh, modeling. So today is more state dependent, or you say the highest and the lowest that you can imply the constraints, but we are looking at how fast this ramp, this uh, change has to be and implement this in the model. And just as an example, if you, for example, use 10 centimeters a day as a restriction, you can see significantly there is a change. What we need to investigate now is what is also the impact on the production. So this is an ongoing uh, work. About the temperature, we have used um, SQL model, it's a 2D model, and we have also used the inflows from the optimization model into the, the model as uh, pumping and traditional. We have calibrated the model because we have also buoys uh, in the two reservoirs with uh, sensors at different depths. And we got a quite good calibration at the different depths in both reservoirs, as you see in the left. So we are starting simulating traditional versus pumping. And what we can see here, this is the segment close to the inlet, outlet. And we see that there is already with the pumping uh, in Roscrep we can see how the stratification is actually affected in the column. And this is not visible when you go far from the, from the inlet or the outlet. So in the middle of the lake, this effect is slightly disappearing. So there is a discontinuous stratification impact. In Oyerban, the lower one, the smaller reservoir, we also see there are some changes, but actually they were also already there during the traditional one. And this is the segment also close to the outlet. And the same when we are in the middle section of the reservoir, it's not uh, any more visible, these changes. So there is also a stratification altered, which was already altered, and then more frequent water level fluctuations. We also look at the ice cover. Uh, we have uh, cameras to look at it. And for example, in Oyerban, close to the intake, uh, because of the water is coming from the upper reservoir, the ice cover is less stable, so it's actually hard to get a constant ice cover. And the model captured well the duration, as we see in the left uh, graph. I don't know if this works. Yeah, the duration, but not the changes on the instability. While in the middle of the lake, the, the ice cover is more constant, also because it's less, as we say, impacted. So then that was also a good capture by the model during the calibration period. And therefore, we ran also traditional and pumping. And what we see is that during uh, the inlet and outlet, there are also some changes, uh, especially uh, close to the inlet outlet segment, where there are shorter ice periods and a tendency of uh, yeah, be more um, lower in the ice thickness, in a sense. So just to conclude, um, there are, uh, the, the smaller the reservoir, actually, the bigger the impacts, and also uh, the difference in the water level variation are higher for um, uh, the traditional than for the pumping, but we have seen that with lower amplitude. The dewater zone is lower when pumping, and also ramping constraints on water level variation can help in reducing the impacts, but we need more data and to continue working in the project to find out which ramping constraints uh, could help and also combine it with uh, some biological data and some presentations we saw yesterday from the PhD working in sustainability might help uh, to also provide some information. And for the temperature, the closer to the inlet outlet is, uh, of course, the area more affected and altered. In Roscrep, there is a weaker and more discontinuous stratification. In Neuerwand, there are more frequent water levels. And also in Neuerwand, the ice period is shorter with lower ice thickness. And just also to say that there is a PhD that has uh, recently started that will look specifically at the impact on the ice cover. So, we will have more results and uh, details about this. 
So that's all. Thanks a lot. And especially thanks to the students, uh, Gaia Donini and Anna Pinelli from uh, Trento University, who stay here with us and has done most of the work that I have been presenting. So thank you. If you have any questions.